and welcome! My name is Elon Osborne, and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And I just watched All Quiet on the Western Front on Netflix, and I just had to talk about it with you. It is a German film about a 17-year-old kid who enlists in the army and is all gung-ho and excited about being on the front lines until he actually is on the front lines and he realizes that it's just absolute madness. Obviously, there are some slow parts and some parts that are character developing, so it's not going to be wall-to-wall -wall action all the time, no. But when the action does pick up, my goodness, the Dolby Atmos soundtrack is incredible. The bass was rumbling every time there was an explosion. And speaking of explosions, the debris and the dust and the dirt that was falling after every explosion was just all over the place and surrounding me, bullets whizzing by. So like with plenty of other movies dealing with war, your sound design is going to be top notch just because of all the chaos that's happening around them. All Quiet on the Western Front in particular, though, has some really good sound design because there's a lot of close-up shots where the camera is closely following behind the main character. So unlike a wide shot where all the sound is happening in front of you, when the camera's that close to the main character and there's just stuff going all around, you have to account for that with your sound design. So things are gonna be above you, things are gonna be to the sides, things are gonna be behind you. There are plenty of shots where people are talking off screen and it is in fact off screen to the left, to the right or behind me. So there was some excellent dialogue mixing. One really cool thing that I took note of is that since you're dealing with World War I and a lot of trench warfare, the camera will be following the main character in the trench, but explosions and debris and chatter from other soldiers that's happening on the ground level above you is only coming out of the height channels, which is really cool. There are scenes with rain that's coming from above you. There's even a scene where some snow is just delicately, lightly falling. And it's just these little tiny, fine sounds. That kind of thing just and, and those are in the height channels too and all around you, surrounding you. So I know not all Atmos mixes are created equal, but this one, they definitely went the extra mile to try and immerse you in the action. It is a two and a half hour movie though, so it is pretty long. And there are plenty of scenes that are just people talking, negotiating, signing official documents so that there can finally be peace among Germany and France. But I gotta say, the beginning of the film is just spectacular. You start off with some very ambient shots of just the countryside and nature and the forest. And then it's got this long shot straight from above that goes towards the dead bodies on the ground. And then it slowly pans and shows the battlefield. But it's really cool because it's so quiet when it's panning down, but then as, as soon as it starts to tilt upwards to show you the rest of the battlefield, that's when the sound design starts coming in. And then all of a sudden it's just pure chaos and then people are fighting and killing each other and stuff. So I thought that had a really cool effect, just going from such quiet ambience to just pure chaos. I will say one of the standout scenes that was hard to swallow. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but I will say that there is a scene in which a death is taking place. Uh, somebody has gotten stabbed several times and they are dying. They are choking on their blood and <laughs> it is very realistic because this scene goes on for minutes. This person is dying, but they obviously don't die right away. That's one of that's one of the movie tropes that I just hate is just how quickly some people die. Especially if someone's choking someone out, they die way too fast. You, it's really, really hard to choke somebody out. I don't know if you knew this, but in order to actually choke somebody out, you've got to be doing it for a long, long time for them to actually pass out. But anyway, this guy is suffering from his wounds, his stab wounds, but he just takes a while to die and it won't leave the scene. 
So it is very heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching, almost a little bit too hard to take <laughs> when you're actually watching it. You know, as I'm in this, as I'm watching this scene, I was like, God, can we just move on? <laughs> because it was just, just die already, please, because it was really hard to, 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 to take. But at the same time, kudos to the sound design team because, oh man, it seemed very realistic. Just the gurgling and the spitting up the blood. Oh, so yay, but at the same time, oh. <laughs> so yeah, overall, it was a standout Dolby Atmos experience when the action was happening. You do have to sit through quite a bit of stuff in between the action, yes, but war isn't pretty and it is a very gory film. So just be aware of that if you haven't seen it yet and you're planning on seeing it now that I'm talking about it. But yeah, if you do have a Dolby Atmos setup in your home theater right now, I would highly recommend this. It's on Netflix, so it's pretty easy to access since I bet the majority of you out there have a Netflix account. That's really all that I had to say. I just wanted to let you know that it is it is a really cool experience if you want to demo your system. So yeah, that's it. Go watch it. You need to watch this. Homework for you. <laughs> As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch All Quiet on the Western Front on Netflix. Experience it in Dolby Atmos. And of course, always be listening.